So last time we'd been together, we had talked about Java synchronized collections. And I talked about some of the pros and cons of synchronized collections. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a stab at describing Java's concurrent collections. And you'll see that they add more interesting synchronization mechanisms and uh, finer grain synchronization in order to optimize the performance of collections in the context of multi-thread access. And you'll see how specifically how these things overcome limitations with the previous description of the synchronized collections. So what are, first of all, just to remind you, synchronized collections have a lock, one lock per collection, per object. And so as a consequence, they tend to be a little bit of a contention point because if you have lots of threads trying to, trying to simultaneously access the synchronized collection, they'll all end up colliding over that one lock. So concurrent collections go further to optimize performance for concurrent programs. And there's a whole bunch of concurrent collections. You can see uh, things like concurrent, uh, these are the interfaces, concurrent map, uh, blocking deck, blocking queue, and then there's a bunch of classes that implement these things in clever ways. So we're going to focus primarily on concurrent hash map with a little discussion about the blocking queues. The main reason why these are a win is that they're not governed by just one lock. They typically, at least the concurrent collections like concurrent hash map, are more cleverly designed to have multiple locks. And therefore, they will be finer level of granularity of locking, so there's less overhead in many cases, number one. And number two, they, uh, of course, also provide good support to avoid memory consistency errors, doing something called um, ensuring so-called happens before relationships. We'll talk more about happens before relationships later. Uh, happens before relationship is basically a, an assurance or a guarantee in the semantics of the Java memory model that a write in one thread will be visible when they need to be, or when that write needs to be read by other threads. So it just make sure that the memory is consistent by the time writers and readers need to coordinate. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. It's, it's kind of a weird point. Um, here's here's a, an intuitive way to think about this. A happens before, before relationship says, if a thread adds an object to a collection by doing a, a, say, a put into the collection, that threads that come along later and get that item out of the collection will see the consistent result. Here would be an example where you get yourself into trouble if you um, this shows an array blocking key, but let's say you had a hash map. Let's say you put something into the hash map, a key value pair into the hash map, but then in another thread you could read the new value, but you get, or you read the new key, but you get the wrong value because it wasn't done consistently and atomically. So happens before relationship says, we will make sure that this happens atomically so that both the key value pairs are visible or the entire object is visible. And it may seem like a an obscure point, but it's really, really important for people who implement concurrent collections to understand this in order to get the right semantics. So we'll talk about that in just a bit. So a good example for the uh, array blocking queue, moving out of the hash map example into the array blocking queue, you want to make sure that if somebody puts something into the queue, that when someone else comes along to take it, the queue will no longer be empty after something's put into it. And if you didn't have the happens before relationship guarantees, you could have these strange inconsistencies where something would be put in the queue, but the other thread wouldn't be able to find the item that was in there. OK, so that's just a quick overview of concurrent collections. I think a lot of this stuff will become a lot more clear as we look at some examples here shortly that illustrate the use of concurrent collections in practice. And you'll particularly see the benefits that come from using concurrent collections relative to the synchronized versions.